Hello YouTube and welcome back to my NBA team draft profile video series. Today I'll be talking about the Atlanta Hawks. If you like what you see, maybe click like, maybe click, click subscribe. They're each like one click. It's pretty quick, it's easy, it's free. And you guys probably just want me to get into talking about the team, right? So when I look at this team, I'm just going to kind of look at their stats to begin with. Um, they actually had a pretty good offense, but they were dead last in defense. They were, you know, just average. They're middling in pretty much every statistical category other than, you know, <laughs> trigger Trey and his three-point attempts. And also, yeah, they were dead last in three-point percentage at 33%. And, you know, their defense wasn't much better. So 3 and D is something that the Hawks, you know, they kind of need it's, they're, they're literally worse in the league in both three and in D. I don't, I don't know if it gets most, much worse than that in the modern day NBA. I don't know if I've been able to say that about any other team. <laughs> this is the worst three and D team in the league, the Atlanta Hawks. And let's just go check out their roster, I guess. So they're gonna have Clint Capella at center next season. We'll see what happens with that. But we've also seen some John Collins at center of the season, but he'll be sliding over to the power forward. At point guard, we of course got Trigger Trey. And I think in this year's draft, they need to add a shooting guard. Even though I think Kevin Porter is a pretty good shooting guard, I think when you look at this team, the main thing you're missing about it is that secondary playmaker. I think Trey Young's game could be elevated to an entirely new level if you add that extra playmaker and that extra player who can ball handle and that type of stuff because Trey Young can be... <laughs> I mean, look at Steph Curry. Look what he's doing without that off-ball movement that Steph Curry's mastered, you know? If he can get on that same level as Steph Curry in terms of ball movement, combine that with his playmaking and with the pieces he has around them, I think this team looks really good for the future. We, actually, we also have to talk about DeAndre Hunter, who's a very good defender. I don't know if there's a whole lot else about him. He's a pretty solid mid-range shooter. I would like to see him work on his three-point shot. I mean, I would like to see a lot of players on this team work on their three-point shots, including Trey Young, I would say. And, yeah, I mean, they were worse in the league in terms of three-point shooting. And, they're, oh, yeah, also they were eighth in three-points attempted. <laughs> I mean... Being worse than three-point percentage looks pretty bad considering, you know, Trey Young is one of the best shooters in the league and he's on your team, you know. And and then it's just about the other pieces around him. I think they probably re-signed DeAndre Bembry, but Teague, Carter, Labissier, and then Damian Jones and Trayvon Graham are just going to be last-minute decisions pretty much. Yeah, and, yeah, I think I said Teague, Carter, and Labiss are probably all going to walk. And then we also see, on the rest of this roster, we see Dwayne Dedman. This dude requested a trade and was not getting any minutes on his team. I don't really want to talk about him. He's very... <laughs> yeah. And then we have, you know, we have Brandon Goodwin, who is pretty solid. I believe, I think they've guaranteed this contract already. Or they're working on re-signing him instead, I think, is what's going on there. And then Bruno Fernando looks like a solid center as well from Maryland. And I think, you know, they'll hold on to him as a backup. I think he's a good backup to Clint Capella. But, I mean, he might be moving to third if they want to run some John Collins of five or maybe pick up a center in this year's draft. He's probably going to move to third stringer, especially if this Hawks offense wants to evolve to the next level and start competing at a championship level instead of, you know, just trying to win games and make the playoffs. I think Bruno Fernandez is a guy they're probably going to hold on to for a long time, but it just matters when he's going to get minutes, how he's going to develop as a player, that sort of thing. This video is not about Bruno Fernando either, though. So let's go to the lineups. Their top lineup played 200 minutes. Even with John Collins, what, 25 game suspension, this is their top lineup with Trey Young, Gavin Huerter, Huerter, sorry. Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, and John Collins at the 5. I think this is a pretty interesting lineup. Plus 5 in terms of points, you know. This is a pretty interesting team. And, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about that lineup. That's just an interesting lineup. 
overall. I mean, like you look at the second one, Parker isn't really it isn't on the team anymore. Third, I mean, Deadman, I don't really know if you want to play him that much. Fourth is pretty interesting with Trey Young and Kevin Huerter, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, Bruno Fernando. I can see this coming out a whole lot again next season with 80 minutes played. Even though there were a negative 11, I think that's a pretty solid 5 right there. They also had this plus 20 lineup. Oh, wait, Alex Len. Yeah, okay, let's just pass. Let's just skip over that. Um, regular season foreman with Young, Hunter, Huerta and Collins. Sorry, that's that's confusing, you know. Huerta and Hunter, they're, they're, they're one letter apart, pretty much. You know, E, R, and N. Those are pretty similar. Any... <laughs> Stop. Okay. So, yeah, they played 533 minutes together. We're minus 2.3, so Reddish might be cutting the difference between those lineups. And with the third, 320 minutes with... Reddish, Young, Hunter, and Collins. They were 320 minutes in plus three and a half. So I think that's an interesting statistic to look at. And yeah, I mean, those are a lot of substantial pieces. You got a great point guard. You have a solid shooting guard. You have two pretty good wings in Hunter and Reddish. You have John Collins, who's a four slash five. I think he's pretty modernized. I think he's a pretty good player. And then you introduce Clint Capella into the team. And I think you just have, what, did I just name six really solid pieces for the future? And I think the Hawks are in a really good scenario right now. I think you just have to point out where their biggest holes are, and that's backup point guard. When you're relying on Brandon Goodwin to be, be your backup point guard, you definitely want to add an improvement there. But you also want to add a guy who can start with Trey Young as a playmaker. And I think, yeah, that's by far their biggest hole. They got 2,100 minutes out of Trey Young, and he was great. They got some Jeff Teague minutes. They got some Brandon Goodwin minutes at point guard. Shooting guard, they have Kevin, Kevin Huerta, of course, playing 1,800 minutes. Bembry playing 900 minutes, and that's that's a pretty solid shooting guard rotation, I would say. But, you know, I think you can see Bembry moving to back a point guard if they do end up, you know, grabbing a new shooting guard in this year's draft or a new starter to bench Kevin Huerta. Or maybe they even start Cam Reddish next year. Played uh, about 15 and a half, 100 minutes. 15, 5, 1. Yeah, you know, that's a confusing number to go with. And then you see DeAndre Hunter playing 2,000 minutes. Those are two very solid wings. I think those are two good pieces for the future. I don't really see a reason to doubt either of those players at this point in time. And I don't think you need to replace either of those players. I mean, Cam Reddish was iffy at times, but I think he still turned out a pretty solid season. John Collins looks like a pretty good player. Played 1,400 minutes after that suspension, and I think he's a very great piece for the future. I think they need to work on that contract. I think they shouldn't trade him. And then at center, you look at Capella, and then who are you going to go with? Damian Jones played 900. Bruno Fernando played 700. You can see Dwayne Denman played 200 minutes. Yeah, it's, they need to figure that out at center as well. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty interesting situation right there with Capella and Deadman, maybe Damian Jones, Bruno Fernando. So they need to figure that out. So let's go to the draft. Uh, pick number six. I think the Hawks really want to go with Tyrese Halliburton. And <laughs> my last draft profile was Cleveland Cavaliers select Tyrese Halliburton as well. And, you know, just having that extra playmaker and ball handler, as well as a guy who can cover up on defense for what Trey Young doesn't bring to the table, 6'5", has good height, and I think he just needs to, <laughs> I think this is the player that the team needs for sure, and this is the player the team wants, and maybe they're even willing to trade up. I mean, this is the team that's just been heard the most in terms of trade discussions. I mean, we saw last year they made those trade swaps to get what this they swapped eight for four so picks with the deandre hunter for center uh, hayes jackson hayes and then they also had acquired pick 10 from the mavericks in the luka Doncic trey young trey trade and that's where they picked up cam reddish last year 
So maybe they are looking to do another first round for two first round swaps. I don't know who would move up at this point. I think you might find maybe the Magic looking to move up right here. I I actually I doubt that. Maybe yeah, I don't I can't really think of anyone who would want to trade up in this year's draft to pick 6. I think a lot of the big name players are going to be off the board. I mean, some team might really want Obi Toppin at number 6, but I don't know about that one. I mean, speaking of Obi Toppin, that's the one that I see most commonly mocked to the Hawks. And just being that solid overall player, I think he brings a lot of substantiality to the team. But considering the fact you already have your two forwards and Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter, you already have John Collins and you already have a whole lot of centers led by Clint Capella, I think... I don't really know how he fits with the team and how he's going to fit into that rotation. I think you look for a player who can eat up a whole lot more minutes, especially if you're drafting a pick six in this year's draft. And I think you need to look for a playmaker. I, even though Onyeka Kungwu is a good playmaker and a good ball handler, uh, I think you, there's <laughs> there's quite a few better playmakers when you see Denny of Diaz on this board, Killian Hayes, LaMelo Ball, and, of course, Cyrus Halliburton is the player that I want them to draft here. And I think Obi Toppin is a very solid overall player, and it's definitely a player they should consider at this spot in the draft. I I don't know if they would take him just because of, you know, rotations and stuff. I also don't think they want to be part of, you know, the draft lottery next year. I don't think they want to be in the sweepstakes for Cade Cunningham next year or Jalen Johnson or whoever they might else might want next year. And I think they should just take a player now that propels them into the playoffs. And I think if you're taking a player like that, it has to be a ball handler and a playmaker. And it's got to be one of those four players pretty much. So, I mean, LaMelo Ball, I doubt he's, he's not going to draft. He's not going to drop a slow. So let's talk Denny of Dia. Denny of Dia does have the chance to drop if the Bulls are like, okay, let's just take Devin Vassell and get it over with. Let's not risk it on Den Denny of Dia. Or maybe they're just like, oh, let's take Killian Hayes or something. Let's see, Denny of Dia on this team. I think you had another wing, but maybe you should play him at shooting guard. Or maybe you just move. You just play multiple wings. Why don't you just play multiple wings? I mean, it works with, with Young and... Denny of Dia, DeAndre Hunter, John Collins, and then Bruno Fernando. Or, yeah, actually, I'm going to go Bruno Fernando right here. I mean, they do have Clint Capella. Maybe you run some Cam Reddish with that lineup and it gets really switchable. And then, like, even if a big tries to mismatch against Trey Young, then you can just help in the paint and that sort of thing. Um, I think Denny of Dia is a good fit. He's super switchable. He's a good playmaker. He's a good ball handler. I think... He could fit. I don't exactly like that he isn't already a great shooter. I think they need a good shooter to pair with Trey Young if they are really going to be working that on-ball, off-ball set. I don't really like the idea of adding new players to the team who aren't shooters at this point. Tyrese Halliburton is a good three-point shooter, and I think that does cover for Trey Young and his spacing and the spacing that he wants for his team. I think we saw, we saw a lot of success with Clint Capella with James Harden. And, and Chris Paul, and I think that lineup was kind of underrated. I don't exactly know why they moved away from it. They were pretty successful, but I think that Trey Young can probably accomplish the same thing. They should probably not draft a center in this year's draft, like Anyeka Kungu or James Wiseman. I think they already have too much going on at center for them to add another center in this year's draft. Other players I would consider, I saw some Isaac Okoro types talks i mean if you really are looking for that really great defender and you he might not be a great three-point shooter right away but he is going to be a big contributor to their defense you run him at the two guard and you just have him play well in defense and you just kind of sacrifice that offense which really hurts the stole to see because you really want to work on this offense in this draft i think you need to get a guy a two-way guy who does it all on both offense and defense I mean, they could just go defensive-minded with Isaac Okoro. Same thing, Devin Vassell. I mean, adding that three-point spacing is pretty good. He's also a good defender, and that could also help out the team a whole lot. But I, I, I still think they need another playmaker slash ball handler. Devin Vassell would probably be the guy I would put for them 
after probably I'd probably go number one Halliburton, number two F Fdia, number three I would say probably Obi Toppin, four Killian Hayes, and five I would slot in Devin Vassell right there. Um, they also have a late second round pick in this year's draft. In terms of just second round picks, I think they should add probably a small forward, a power forward players that I would draft. Probably if they dropped, I would drop draft like probably Killian Tilly if he somehow falls all the way to 50 if Paul Reed somehow drops Reggie Perry Xavier Tillman's not dropping Daniel too is not dropping but if those sorts of players do end up dropping I think they should go with them I mean Isaiah Joe is not going to drop this far but they should probably go for Isaiah Joe if he's there Caleb Weston's an interesting prospect in terms of his three-point shooting Players I don't have on here. That guy at a BYU, I think it's Yoeli Childs, who shot like 50, uh, 43% from three as a center. I think they should look after him too. And yeah, I think that about covers it for the Atlanta Hawks. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Maybe consider liking, maybe consider subscribing, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.